hello there, history nerds. Shannon Butler, historian here at the Poughkeepsie Public Library. You know, Dutchess County is filled with some fabulous architecture. Uh, we have the luxury of having some very famous architects working within our area, including the firm of McKim, Mead & White, Richard Morris Hunt, Frederick Clark Withers, just to name a few. However, we also have a few homegrown architects, born and raised right here in the area, who have, I believe, left an equally important mark on our architectural landscape. Today, we are going to take a look at the life and work of a local architect born right here in Poughkeepsie, Arnott Cannon Jr. Cannon was born here in Poughkeepsie on August 3rd, 1839. He apprenticed originally under his father, Arnott Cannon Sr., who was a carpenter and constructor. He eventually headed down to New York City to study in the office of architect Frederick Draper. There were no schools dedicated to architecture in the U.S. when Arnott came of age. Before Cannon had his chance to make his mark on the architectural landscape of the area, he first served his country by fighting in the American Civil War. He joined up in 1861 with the 128th New York Volunteer Infantry. From there, he made his way down to the Siege of Port Hudson and the Siege of Mobile. In 1863, he was making his way up the ranks, from second lieutenant to first lieutenant to captain, and then finally to lieutenant colonel. He did well for himself, serving in the 97th United States Colored Infantry. He received his discharge in April of 1865 at the end of the war, and then he returned to Poughkeepsie to resume with his dream career. When he got back from serving, first he started work on construction, like this building right behind me, which was originally designed by architect J.A. Wood. This is the Vassar Institute, and he worked on this construction project right around 1880. He also worked on the construction build project right behind this one, on the other side of the street, which is now the Cunin Hackett Center. It must have been very inspirational to work alongside such a brilliant architect like Wood. Now just up the street from these buildings, we find one of his first creations solo project. He did a whole overhaul of the William Reynolds house known as, today, the Italian Center. We can see in his beautiful porch and tower uh, some of his true designs coming through. Now, on the corner of Church and Academy Streets was his family home and office, which, of course, he designed. He built it between 1885 and 1887. Sadly, the office portion was removed in the late 20th century. But what remains is not in the best condition either. However, you can get a good sense of his fabulous artistic eye for detail in what's left of the building. And you gotta give it to the guy. This is a fabulous marketing technique to have a building that you designed in a very prominent location in the city for all to see. Well, the clients started coming in pretty quickly after its construction. One of Cannon's most recognizable and hands down my personal favorite works of his is Wilderstein. Yes, that's pronounced Stein, not Steen. Now, this home is, of course, famous as the residence of Daisy Sukli, FDR's distant cousin and close confidant. Uh, this particular house is now in private hands. It is lovingly cared for by a devoted staff. And you can come tour here, I highly recommend you do. This is a great chance to get a close-up view of one of Cannon's greatest works. The house itself, of course, complete with a five-story tower, a conservatory, a grand staircase. It also has some beautiful Tiffany's windows on the inside. Not the famous Lewis Comfort Tiffany, his cousin, actually. The house itself was a work of art started in 1888, and it was a team effort. Arnott and his brother George worked on this creation together. 
The house also has a state-of-the-art security system. There was detectors on the first floor windows that were attached to a gong that was up on the second floor, so somebody could hear it if the windows were open from the outside. by Wilderstein Historic Site and visit one of Arnott's works up close and personal. Now heading down to Beacon, we find another one of Cannon's creations designed in 1889. It's now known as the Bodsford Briar Bed and Breakfast. It's on High Street and this is another fabulous creation of his. You'll notice the tower looks very similar to the tower at Wilderstein. In 1891, he designed the Elting Building on Main Street in Poughkeepsie. This was for the very famous Elting Clothing Store that was popular in its day. And uh, he once again has a tower. He really does love these towers, doesn't he? This is the home he designed for Mrs. Homer Nelson. 1895 on Mill Street and oh look a tower. This is the Tower Family Mausoleum designed by Arnott Cannon. It's quite labyrinth actually. Anybody else find it odd that the Tower Family Mausoleum is surprisingly lacking in towers? It, in its construction I mean. In 1894, Cannon designed what he considered to be one of his favorite achievements, the Masonic Temple on Cannon Street in Poughkeepsie. He took an old Methodist church and redesigned it, essentially, making it a brick building, uh, keeping the original columns, though. Sadly, this is also where Cannon's life would come to an end, by his own choosing. In 1895, his health was rapidly deteriorating. He had succumbed to something that would essentially destroy the use of his vision, which you kind of need when you're an architect. His beloved career came to an end, and he was only in his 50s. On March 31st, 1898, Cannon had breakfast with his wife that morning. He then left his house on Church Street, walked about a block or so away to the Masonic Temple that he built on Cannon Street. He took a seat up on the second floor and finished up a note to Mr. Frost, the city coroner. He explained in the note that he was afraid that he was going insane and that he wanted a simple funeral. He then took a revolver and shot himself in the chest. He was 58 years old. Over a century after his sad demise, many of his buildings are still standing tall, still serving purposes, and still being loved. This has been brought to you by the good folks at the Poughkeepsie Public Library District. Thank you very much for watching.